In this lecture light, I'm going to show you how to produce a bar graph that will uh, display the mean of two different conditions of a data set and, and put it into a, a graph, uh, very much like the one right here in the bottom right. Uh, for this, uh, we're going to use the uh, data frame uh, that uh, that is uh, the garbage disposal data which we have used before I'm going to import this and save this into the DF variable just taking a quick peek at it you can see that we've got the familiar time at bin column which is used for other parts of this homework as well uh, we have the proportion correct column which is going to be used for our next uh, for this bar plot and something that is of critical importance here is the condition. Uh, what this tells us here is that we have an independent variable with two levels. We don't really care what the manipulation or, or, or what they are what they're doing in this study. But what we can gather is that we have uh, several rows of data, some of which fall into condition one and some of them uh, that fall into condition two. So uh, in order for us to produce a bar plot like this, we need to compute the mean of all of the values that fall in condition one and we need to compute the mean of all of the values that fall into condition two. Uh, for this to happen we need to learn a new skill and that skill is to be able to filter our data for just certain subsets of it. So first we need to just create an output of our data that will that will display only um, condition one and then another code that will do only condition two. So let's take a peek at how this looks like. So we've got our uh, DF, and as soon as I use the square bracket, which you have done uh, many weeks ago when we just wanted to select certain subset, when, for example, when you uh, looked at standardizing the data and you wanted to look at the standard form of the second or the third value, you also use the square bracket and you, you selected at the time which uh, which uh, element you wanted to pick out from the vector. Now, when we want to do the same kind of filtering for a data frame, it's a little bit more complicated because uh, we don't deal with just a single column of data, but we have four columns of data in this particular case, and we have uh, 44 rows of data. So when we filter, we can filter by row and we can filter by column. and uh, in order for this to work, we need to uh, type a few extra lines of code. Not extra lines, a few extra characters of code. So in this particular case, we want to create a condition where we select every row of data that meets the column condition of one or two. Uh, for this to happen, we're going to say uh, that uh, inside inside our df data frame we're going to look for uh, the condition to be equal to one so this is our um, uh, line of code that's critical here and beyond that I don't so if, if I run this code we need this uh, comma here for a moment and we're just gonna leave it like that and nothing after that or just a closing bracket if I run this code you can see that uh, what I what I see displayed here is uh, condition uh, equals one and only that data so I can see rows 1 through 22 displayed which is uh, exactly correct 1 through 22 is all the data that meets condition one and nothing else. So this this piece of uh, code here is going to uh, filter our data correctly. Now we only care about the mean of the proportion of co correct uh, column, which means that we don't really need any of these other columns of data. What we can do here is after the comma, we can specify the column number that we want to filter for. So at this point, we would say that we want one to the third column and nothing else. And if I rerun this piece of code now, you can see that all I, all I see here is just the third column of data output, exactly the same rows but now all of these other columns are also discarded from, from my view. So that's perfect. This is exactly what I want. And so now I can just simply calculate the mean of this data. And look at that beautiful. We have 0 0.59 and that's the piece of uh, 
information that we want here. So I'm just going to call it mean of condition one and I'm going to save that in a variable and so uh, at this point what I can do is run bar plot and I can even plug that in here and if I run bar plot of one you can see that uh, the mean has been produced of 0 0.59 now the the y-axis has to be adjusted a little bit and I'm going to leave that customization up to you in order for you to understand how to uh, produce different kinds of um, bar plot customizations run this piece of code question mark bar plot and when you do that there's a bunch of description about what you can do with height and width and and names and colors and angles and so on and so forth so uh, i would like to see bar plots with proper uh, x-axis labels titles and all that stuff and that's for you to figure out uh, I'm just showing you kind of the the substance, the the hard part of it, which is to compute the mean, uh, and and you can take the rest of it uh, and figure that out uh, on your own. Uh, I will show you one more thing. So I'm going to let you figure out how to type up the code to find condition to mean. So I'm just going to put a dummy value in here. I'm just going to say it's one but you'll have to replace this code on your own uh, with something that's similar to this and uh, the reason i want to do this is because i want to show you how to do two means how to place two means in here this is not the way to do it you need to place it in a vector so here the good old c function comes back which you've seen on, on class one as well uh, we just simply place the two means into a vector and when we rerun this piece of code here you can see that we have column one that is equal to 0 0.59 and the second column of that is equal to one and now we have the bare bones of a beautiful bar graph uh, i'll let you take it from here if there are any issues just uh, make your voice heard on whatsapp and we'll we'll clarify them as we go